Hey, James Rath here. So recently I had to make an eye doctor appointment because I'm in the process of getting a guide dog and for that consideration, you just want to make sure that you know your ophthalmologist declares you as legally blind and uh, I am. But there's some updates to my vision that I wasn't really expecting and I want to discuss that with you. If you're new here, my name is James Rath and I'm legally blind. I'm also a filmmaker and a vlogger and I share my life and experiences with legal blindness, whether it's interacting with technology or traveling across the country. If you wanna see different, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications and like this video for more. Now, I am a firm believer in just because you meet or know a disabled person, their medical history is none of your business. You don't need to know their backstory or how or why or that's none of your business but many of us do work in the field of advocacy or storytelling and so i'm pretty open about it and i share quite a bit of information now i also do consider some things you know it'd be more on the privacy side and, and so i don't give everything out but i'm going to discuss an update to my eyes because Quite frankly, I talk about my eyes quite a bit and a lot of people come back here to learn more about my journey with legal blindness and the experiences that I have. Just to get you up to speed, I was born legally blind, meaning that I was born with a visual acuity of 20 over 200 or worse. That's just how we measure vision and distance here in the United States. In particular, my conditions were ocular albinism. so. I have albinism, I'm albino, genetically my genes are mutated and I have a lack of pigment and this has been literally lab tested to ensure that that was the right diagnosis that I have or if I carry the gene to an offspring, all that stuff. So on the other side, albinism can oftentimes, because you're born with underdeveloped retinas and uh, lack of pigment in the eyes uh, and, and melanin, you, you may have other conditions that come from it or get triggered and because my eyes aren't fully developed as an average person would I also have nystagmus. Nystagmus was something that I knew I had for a long time and that's where my eyes are constantly shaking back and forth. It kind of creates a sort of vertigo look oftentimes for me when my eyes are focusing at something things just start to look like they're shaking or moving uh, or streaking in a way. Those are my visual conditions. Now my two eyes actually saw a little bit differently. My left eye was 20 over 200. It's considered legally blind and that's non-correctable. The other eye, my right eye, is considered 20 over 300. So this eye has always seen a bit blurrier than my, my left eye. So oftentimes if I'm actually using my vision or focusing, it's typically finding a null point with the left eye a little bit more uh, focused on the subject. Growing up, my vision hadn't ever really changed and it wasn't really on track to do so. However, and I won't get into this story in this video, which there's other videos about it, and I can make more videos going into more details, especially considering it's Mental Health Awareness Month. I got a surgery just due to influence of being bullied and stuff and wanting to fit in and Again, I won't get into all that right now. But I got a surgery which improved my visual acuity over the course of a few months and it lasted for about two years. And that left my left eye at pretty much 20 over 100, 20 over 90, close to that. And it left my right eye at about 20 over 150. So I wasn't considered legally blind for about two years or so. And then overnight, it all pretty much reverted back <laughs> and I couldn't really explain the science or the reasoning behind that. We went to the eye doctors, confirmed this eye is 20 over 200, this one is 20 over 300 again. Pretty much just lost sight that I experienced for very little and yeah. I did make a few more checkups at the eye doctors following that of course because you want to make sure, okay, things aren't getting any worse than what he was like born with or you just want to make sure things you know you're up to date they recommend that you go to your eye doctors even if you have a visual impairment and you're told things aren't going to change you should probably still make a visit once a year maybe every two years or so if you have to but it's good to see your eye doctor it's good to hear your eye doctor for some of y'all 
me. So of course, for the last few years, I have not been following that advice and I hadn't seen my eye doctor since 2014, which is coming up on about seven years. Hadn't visited my eye doctor in about seven years. So of course I, I needed to make a trip to my ophthalmologist. Last time I had saw my ophthalmologist, my vision was 20 over 200 and 20 over 300 respectively. Cool. My vision is sort of fluctuating throughout the day from fatigue and eye strain and stuff like that. So it can kind of act worse than that or, or even cause migraines and it can sometimes be on its best behavior. <laughs> you just never know. The reason for this visit, one, it is again good to check up on your eyes and just make sure nothing new developments are happening. And if they are, just be able to follow up and know what is available, what isn't available, and just how you can live with it or treat it if, if it's available. <laughs> However you want to approach whatever new developments could be going on with your eyes. The primary reason for this visit was to get reacquainted with my ophthalmologist and to express my interest in getting a guide dog because that is something I talked about last year in a Q&A video and it's something that now I'm following up with on the medical side to give the forms and necessary documentation to the guide dog school that I'm currently talking with, reconfirming that I'm legally blind and that they can give kind of a detailed report of my vision. Also, it's quite weird to go to doctor's visits during uh, the pandemic because they're empty. Like, they're, one, they're super booked. It's it's hard to get appointments right now. Harder than I feel like it usually is. At least that's been my case. Beyond that, there was no one there. <laughs> this was a doctor's office that they're usually seeing multiple people at one time and every room is filled and the waiting room is like filled to a T. It's a very well-respected and, and long time practice of ophthalmology. I was the only patient there during this block of time. Of course, like the staff and the eye doctor was there, but it was just a strange experience. And I've been to the doctors at the start of the pandemic for other things and stuff here and there, but strange times. You go through the routine of, can you see the big E? I'm like, yeah, I can, I can see the big E, sort of. It's blurry, but yeah, I can identify that that's an E. All right, cool. Second line, can you make out anything? And I'm like, squinting, squinting. Left eye is like, oh, maybe there's an E, it kind of looks somewhat identical to the silhouette above it. I'm gonna go with an E. Okay, can you read the remaining like three or four or whatever characters? No, <laughs> no, I cannot. And then of course with the right eye, it's like, yes, the big E is there. Oh yeah, no, I, I couldn't even tell you that that was an E below the other E on the second line. So then from there, you check the eye chart. That's you know, more so from reading distance. And then you go through and you check different frames. So like one, two, one, two, say which one you prefer, or about the same. Just to sort of determine what a prescription you would have. I don't even know what to call that binocular station with all the lenses. So I did get a prescription and stuff. Of course, glasses do very little. All it does is slightly sharpen the first line, that E, and and kind of sharpens the, the second line a little, but it doesn't help in any way to like identify the other characters on that line that I couldn't make out already. The point for me to maybe get glasses is because I am uh, nearsighted, if I'm playing things like video games or if I'm doing work on the computer, they might help for a couple inches away. It's still really important that I use things like zoom or magnification or even text to speech options because that relieves a whole lot of uh, stress and strain on my eyes. But glasses can help again with maybe identifying certain silhouettes and, and colors uh, and, and things on screen if, if need be. For me, I'm not necessarily in a rush to get new glasses because I've never really used them before. So I got my prescription, which I may get for sunglasses, but eyeglasses, not really my thing, not, not what I need. If you're curious and want to know like my experience with glasses and I could consider making a video, possibly even like a short video, like under a minute talking about that. Let me know, comments are there and I'm experimenting with short form content too. Some of the news that I was told was when measuring the acuity of my eyes, the right eye had a change. This time around, instead of being 20 over 300, it was 20 over 400. So they were able to confirm that this vision coming from this eye has decreased a little bit. It's not life-changing for me, 
it's not going to impact the technology and mobility aids that I already use, but it is good to know. And it's something to maybe keep an eye on, <laughs> pun, in the, in the coming future for, for future visits that I might make annually or biannually to the eye doctor. I'm also pretty content with like, if my vision gets worse, I'll live, I'll be okay. I'm, I've already learned to adapt to screen readers and a white cane and I'm already pursuing a guy dog. And so yes, things would be a little bit different. And I don't know if all my vision were to go, I can still story tell. There's still ways for me to uh, film make, to, to make movies. And it, it is nice that I'm very privileged that I have the visual reference in my head of like, the world to some degree the, uh, with a vision that I, I've had. With things like an iPhone, screen readers that are built into iPhones or even Android devices, right? If the Android camera app works with a talkback, you can record video and then bring it into an accessible video editor. iMovie is one, for example. Final Cut Pro. In terms of that, I'm, I'm pretty content. So there's also an update on the actual eye conditions. As I explained earlier, I do have ocular albinism and nystagmus. But I also got confirmation that I have something else, and maybe I had this from the start, I, I'm pretty sure I did, but I never really heard it or, or it never clicked with me from prior visits. And my parents, I don't think, picked up on it either. They may have just assumed it was a part of the nystagmus. I now know that some of the vertigo and, and the uh, double vision and, and some of what I see of the filters is actually brought on by three different situations, ocular conditions. Ocular albinism, making it light sensitive, so light overexposing, as well as nystagmus that kind of creates this sort of shaking in my vision. And the last thing that I also have is astigmatism. And astigmatism is a fairly common eye condition. So even a lot of people who have like near good perfect sight or normal sight may have astigmatism and essentially what it is is lights have multiple focal points in your eyes so instead of light coming in and reaching one focal point there's multiple which then can kind of create streaking or even sometimes double vision for light and that can play with the nystagmus which is already kind of shaking and not keeping a steady or focus image in my eyes and then that's of course causing the light to balance and, and yeah yeah it's a wobbly mess up in this this pov <laughs> because i've had people ask me in the past oh I, I have nystagmus but i don't see the whole vertigo thing at least all the time is that kind of just unique to some people with nystagmus it may play in me having astigmatism that sort of creates that distortion in my vision. I'm obviously not an ophthalmologist. I'm just kind of relaying the info that I had gained during this visit. Hopefully that brings a little bit more of a clarity into how I see my, my point of view and give you an update as I continue to share my experience with vision loss and legal blindness. Now you know a little bit more of the numbers behind it and if you didn't see my last video, I announced that I'm doing a podcast now, and that is called The See Different Show. That's where I'm talking with people who are doing really cool things in entertainment, technology, maybe the business world, but also with the value of accessibility going back into the work that they do. In the very first episode, I talked to my friend Lachi, who is an award-nominated recording artist with Sony, and she's legally blind. So she talked about her journey in the music industry as someone with sight loss, and how she's trying to make that industry more accessible. I don't know much about the music industry, so it was really fascinating to hear and learn from her. And I am just very excited to hear about her continuous success in, in making that industry more accommodating for more artists and fans alike when we go to venues and, and to places, festivals, and just want to enjoy the music. Again, that is called The See Different Show with James Rath yours truly. You can go to cdifferent.co to check that out. Also, if you haven't heard yet, I have merch now and it's not just like my name slapped on a logo. I, I have this custom merch that's part of the See Different store. So if you go to cdifferent.store or you can just follow the link at cdifferent.co. There's also uh, 
merch underneath the video on YouTube and on my channel. What I'm wearing right now is a part of that collection. It's called the Dancing Eye, and it's a minimal eye. I'm really into it, and I worked with a, an artist who has nystagmus as well, and she helped to create this vision. <laughs> a percentage of every purchase will go towards funding some charities and nonprofits that align with my values and my views of trying to make the world more accessible. And so, Dancing Eye supports American Nystagmus Network and things such as the See Different Shirt and, and that line of apparel and, and merch will go to support a changing uh, nonprofit. Every quarter, month to month, we'll vote on that as a community and I'll have more details about that soon. I love to get clarity on my diagnosis, right? That's... <laughs> Man, the vision funds today, but it's 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 always good. I will keep you posted on any other changes that may come my way. And I know people keep asking for more information about the guide dog and and that journey. I will share more info when I feel it's more appropriate and things are concrete. So be on the lookout for that. Now I would like to hear from you. Let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite breed of dog, and if you don't happen to be a dog person, why? But also just let me know your favorite animal down below. But I would prefer if you told me your your favorite breed of dog. And in fact, if you have to, lie to me. What is your favorite breed of dog? For me, personally, I'm into golden retrievers, I'm into Labradors, I'm into, what else? Australian Silky Terriers, but I'm a little biased there. I have one, his name's Ash, and he is 16 years old as of this past month. He's awesome, he's a, he's a cool boy. Love that dude. I hope you could see different today. I'll hear you next time. Bye.